There's a number of ancestral Puebloan ruins. Not sure I want to be sourcing water from this particular pond here. Peculiar sites here in Fish Creek, Owl Creek Loop. Today is May 29th, 2018 and I scored a permit to spend a couple of nights doing the Fish Creek Owl Creek Loop here in the Grand Gulch Cedar Mesa area here in southeastern Utah. It's about a 17 mile loop. There's a couple of reliable water sources along the way which is key because there's been minimal runoff and rain this spring with such a light snow year this winter. There's a number of Anastasi or ancestral Puebloan ruins along the way. The weather's shaping up to be pretty much perfect with highs in the mid 80s and lows in the low 50s. So we'll see how I go. Coming up on the rim of the Fish Creek Canyon here, enjoying a my first real view of the trip with bear's ears off in the distance there and what I believe to be the Abajo Mountains off in the northeasterly direction there with a nice cloudscape sort of blanketing that. I'll be coming up here shortly on the drop down into Fish Creek Canyon. The initial drop down into Fish Creek Canyon not that big of a deal. I was able to go down backwards without taking my pack off. As you can see, somebody's piled up some rocks to make it a smaller step up to the footholds there. But still, good idea to bring along a rope in case you need to lower or raise your pack for these initial steep drops into both canyons. Otherwise, it's typical Red Rock Canyon scenery so far with lizards to match. After dropping down onto the canyon floor here in Fish Creek Canyon, I walked a little bit upstream and came to my first ruin there. It's got a uh, three walls with uh, looks like a wooden framework of a roof still remaining. Incredible how that can still be intact after 700 plus years. Finally connected to where Fish Creek meets with the trail, definitely brimming with life. So far I've seen a frog and a hummingbird and a variety of other birds. And you can see that the water's flowing there. Beautiful sort of oasis here. It's always nice to find reliable water in the desert. There's even some signs of beaver activity. If we take a closer look at this log over here. And the next ancestral Puebloan ruin is supposed to be not too far south of here. Well, I managed to find a campsite here between the arches that are noted on the Trails Illustrated map. 
when I'm not talking. There's some serious, oh, there it goes again. Yeah, there's some serious wildlife noise going on out there. Whether they're frogs or birds, I'm not sure. Probably birds that are chatting back and forth with each other. Not sure if the camera picks that up, but definitely reminds me of the kookaburras in Australia that will stand next to each other at point blank range on a branch and just go at it <laughs> to each other, like right in each other's faces. The kookaburra is definitely one of the more memorable Australian birds, and perhaps they live in other parts of the world as well. Maybe they're just anticipating the full moon tonight. I'm not sure. I'll see how long they carry on. Just goes to show you that you can go way out into the wilderness here and still have some fairly noisy neighbors. Anyhow, I guess it all comes with the territory of camping in the backcountry. Today's May 30th, 2018. And I made it maybe halfway to the confluence from the canyon rim, so I'm guessing I covered, I don't know, five or six miles yesterday. For today, I'm gonna head down to the confluence. I noticed that in McCloyd Canyon, there are a number of the ancestral Pueblin ruins down there. I'm gonna pack some extra water and maybe camp there at the confluence. There's a stretch without water between here and maybe the middle of Owl Canyon. Just gonna see how it goes and hopefully have some time to get south of the confluence and check out a few of those ruins. It was a nice warm night last night, didn't even need the rain fly, and just slept in my sleeping bag liner for most of the night. Real pleasant out here, even with those loudly squawking birds on the other side of the canyon. It's always a treat seeing hummingbirds in the backcountry. The author of this excellent book on hiking in Utah, David Day, he talks about the characteristics of where to find these Anastasi or ancestral Pueblin ruins. It's almost always on the south facing wall so that they receive the maximum amount of winter sun. But in cases where the canyon is too narrow to farm, the ruins tend to be closer to the very top of the rim such that they can farm above the rim. And in studying the rim, it can be kind of a gray area. Like is that what's left of a uh, ruin or not? It's just fun challenge to see how many ruins we can spot here. I found the first of three yesterday, but I did not find the other two that he noticed. It helps to have some lightweight binoculars or maybe a camcorder with a nice zoom to try to spot these ruins that are higher up and yeah, obviously more remote. You can tell that these ancient people were very good climbers, no doubt about that. And just remember that extra rock climbing equipment to access these ruins is prohibited in this area of such high concentration of these relics. And be sure not to touch or walk too close to the ruins as well. It can really destabilize and encourage the faster degradation of these really precious ancient ruins here. I'm just above the confluence of Fish Creek and Owl Creek and came upon some pretty interesting vegetation here where the grass is growing in kind of a circular way. There's a cactus growing inside of this one. 
Anyway, just some peculiar sights here in Fish Creek Canyon. I did decide to camp at the confluence and continue down Lower Fish Creek. I was told that there was a water source about an hour south of the confluence, which is about where I am now, but definitely looks like a frog colony living in this one. Counted at least 15 or so of these frogs. Not sure I want to be sourcing water from this particular pond here. There's supposed to be a, a spring down below the confluence of Fish Creek and McLeod Creek Canyon. So maybe I'll go make it down that far and be able to pull some more water. Needless to say, the desert definitely sucks the water out of you. It's easy to get dehydrated out here. As I make my way further south towards the confluence with McLeod Canyon, Sure enough, there are some ruins over there along the wall with a couple of windows. Once again, I'm seeing quite a bit of these sort of thorny tumbleweed things. I'm not sure the name for them. But yeah, they're pretty painful if you brush up against them. They'll uh, stick into your leg without much force. One of the hazards of walking through this part of the desert. Hopefully, I'll be coming up on a spring here pretty quickly that's noted on my map. I did not have luck finding the spring, unfortunately, but I did find one more ruin. One window up there in the shadows at this point. And panning to the right, we can see the remains of another structure that was there, but is crumbling beneath the weight of many years and quite a bit of red rock there. So enjoying the side trip. Took a couple hours and a few miles to get down here below the McLeod Canyon confluence with Lower Fish Creek, but definitely worth it. And after I enjoy some dinner, it'll be a nice walk back to my campsite. Good thing I brought the headlamp. Even though I'm faced with sourcing water from that frog pond that we saw earlier. Pretty special vibe walking up the dry wash with bats fluttering overhead and all around. Such a pleasant temperature as well. It's a good time for a night hike. Today's May 31st, 2018. Yesterday I found a nice big shady juniper tree to pitch my tent under and enjoyed a siesta as I found even if it's only in the mid 80s it still gets to be pretty exhausting having that extra heat beating down on me so with that I had some extra rest in the afternoon and waited for it to cool down and went out hiking again at maybe 5 30 or 6 o'clock to take a side trip down Lower Fish Creek Canyon. Before finding a couple of different ruins, even found a, a water source in a, a stagnant puddle. Did not have to fill up in the frog pond like I thought I'd have to, but found a puddle of water that had a little less pond scum floating on it. The Sawyer Gravity Filter actually did a great job of making that tastes quite nice. So after that side trip of five or six miles or so, came back and actually ended up hiking in the dark for a couple of hours. So while it's nice to avoid the heat, it was a real challenge to avoid the cryptobiotic soil. I was able to walk through the riverbed for much of the time, but yeah, for those times that were out of the riverbed, it was definitely hard to not step on the, the crunchy soil that we try to avoid when we're hiking out here in the desert. For today, I've got about six and a half miles or so 
to walk up Owl Creek Canyon and spot the rather large arch along the way, Neville Arch, and then see some more Anastasi or ancestral Puebloan ruins before I climb out of the canyon and back to the parking lot. Neville Arch. I can only assume it's named after the Neville brothers. I can see why the author, David Day, likes to save Owl Creek Canyon for last. It's definitely got a more interesting texture than Fish Creek Canyon. Further up Owl Creek Canyon, we come to a hanging garden with quite a large pool involved that one will need to climb around. Another thing I'm finding about the climb out of Owl Creek Canyon is that it definitely has a lot more exposure. So make sure you're comfortable with that. Not the place I'd want to be if the rocks were wet. Fortunately, unlike Coyote Gulch, it doesn't have that sort of sand on top of the slick rock. So, fortunately my shoes are gripping much better today. And it helps having dry shoes as well, certainly. But just know that if you're going to be attempting this hike, Just below the canyon rim here at Owl Creek Canyon is really the most well-preserved ruins that we've seen so far on the loop here. Walls and ceiling are fully intact here. And the kiva is well preserved as well. This location is peculiar because it's so well shaded. It must be very cold in the winter time. That might lead one to believe that it was used for religious activities or maybe storing some grains. Pretty special spot with the one kiva and the three well preserved rooms. Altogether, it ended up being, oh, about 22 miles or so over the three days. Definitely bordered on uncomfortably hot in the afternoon, especially between, oh, one o'clock and about five o'clock. According to the ranger, it's usually warmer this time of year, so feeling fortunate that I was able to catch a nice weather window that was slightly cooler than normal. Only saw a few people, I believe it was four other groups in all. Very worthwhile for just the $8 permit for backpacking. The scenery here in Owl Creek Canyon is quite a bit more dramatic than Fish Creek Canyon. That's all for now. See you next time. Next, Backpacker Diaries. Headed over to explore Great Basin National Park. Spotted a couple more buildings here. Left over from the mining days. I did choose to continue the sort of high route around the backside of those cliffs. There was quite a few teeter-totters. 
one of them even pinched my leg a little bit in between uh, that rock and a hard place. Thank you.